What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with Apple's grand finale to end 2017. This is the brand new iMac Pro. So the iMac Pro is by far the most powerful Mac you can buy and also the most expensive. So the iMac Pro on the surface looks like a space great 5K iMac, but underneath that it's quite a bit more than that. It's powered by Intel Xeon W CPUs with EEC RAM along with standard SSDs across the board, along with Radeon Pro Vega GPUs with either 8 gigs or 16 gigs of HDMI. HBM2 memory. So the box of the iMac Pro looks like any other 5K iMac, but they've changed the packaging design quite a bit to make it more environmentally friendly. So once I pull the tab, I can go ahead and open up the box, which reveals a lot of brown. Typically this has been wrapped in lots of styrofoam padding, but this time we have something that's much more recyclable, but it's also a heavier box overall. So it does add some weight to the overall package. So before we get to the main event, we have all of our accessories, which are also packaged differently than the previous design. So we have our power cable, which is in its own dedicated box just beneath the stand. So the power cable is black to match the space gray iMac, and that is not the only black cable we'll find. So as always, slotted in the top of the box is the accessory package containing the keyboard and mouse. Now for the iMac Pro, all of the accessories come in a matching space gray. So we get a space gray magic keyboard with a numeric keypad, which is the new keyboard they released this year. And we also get a space gray second generation magic mouse. So the top of it actually kind of looks like the back of an iPhone 8 with that glossy surface. The rest is anodized aluminum. Beneath that, we'll find the optional space great magic trackpad. So this is something you have to add when you configure your iMac Pro. It doesn't come standard with it. And it pretty much looks like the space gray trackpad from a MacBook Pro. But the color matching doesn't stop there. So just below the literature packet, we'll find a matching black lightning cable for recharging the magic accessories. So none of these space gray accessories can be purchased separately from the Apple Store, at least right now. Now, if you're still not impressed by the color matching, if you look inside the paperwork, we get a set of black Apple stickers, which is something we saw with the last Mac Pro. We also get a quick start guide and a black microfiber cleaning cloth for cleaning that glass display. Comparing these accessories to the standard white and silver accessories, obviously the black keys mean we have much more vibrant white text, which I think looks really sharp. Again, this is very similar to the Space Gray MacBook Pros. Of course, they've color coordinated in other areas, such as the antenna stripe along along the back of the devices, which is colored black instead of white. And the bottom of the accessories are a matte black plastic instead of a glossy white plastic. So getting to the main event, it's actually surprising how lightweight the iMac Pro is. It basically weighs the same as a standard 27 inch iMac. That's pretty surprising when you consider how much hardware is in this computer. Now this is wrapped in a fabric like material, which is also color matched to the space gray. Previously we had a white styrofoam envelope, so this is a little more environmentally friendly. Once we break the seal along the back, we can go ahead and lift up the envelope. We still have some plastic to remove. So there's a piece of plastic covering the glossy plastic black Apple logo on the back. This is actually part of the radio transparency needed for things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to work through this all metal chassis. There's also plastic covering the glass on the front and all we have to do is peel it off along the side so we can pull this off neatly in one sheet and reuse it if we need to. And there's one more piece of plastic protecting the back of the stand during shipping. It no longer covers the entire foot. There is an exclusive wallpaper for the iMac Pro that sort of goes with the space gray theme. You'll find that under the wallpaper selection. From the outside, the iMac Pro looks exactly like a 5K iMac. Same overall dimensions, but there's a few things besides the space gray that points to the fact that this is a different design. So internally, we need a lot more ventilation. So unlike the 27 inch 5K iMac, we don't have a RAM access door right below the vent. Instead, the vent is much larger to allow the computer to breathe. Now this computer is noticeably quieter when it's under load. So even if the fan is spooled up, the sound is much softer than the higher pitch sound of the smaller fan within the 5K IMAX. To feed that larger exhaust fan, we have some vents just underneath the back edge, which is not present on the standard 5K IMAX. This also means that the Kensington lock that was underneath the power port on the 5K IMAX is not present on the IMAX Pro we still have that razor thin edge that bows out toward the center and meets the articulating hinge of the stand. The concaved power button is in the same spot on the lower left side. iMac Pro also expands its IO to include not only four USB 3 ports, but four Thunderbolt 3 ports. We also get a faster UHS-2 SDXC card slot. Of course, we get a headphone jack, but we also get a 10 gigabit ethernet port. That's a first for an iMac. iMac Pro is also the first Mac to get a 1080p FaceTime camera. 
and it's a big improvement over the 720p we've been used to. We also get four microphones for better audio pickup and noise isolation. There's actually two microphones on either side of the camera, so you'll see tiny pinholes in the glass, but we also get two microphones on the back just above the camera etched into the aluminum like previous iMac designs. The microphone for the 5K iMac is actually just above the Apple logo hidden behind the glass. By now, we're pretty familiar with Apple's newest 5K display. This is a 27 inch panel, the same one that's also on the 5K iMac. So we still get that DC IP3 color spectrum, which can produce up to 1 billion colors. We also have 500 nits of maximum brightness. So it's still one of the best displays for professional photographers and videographers who need accurate color. We can also output to two additional 5K monitors for three 5K displays. No other Mac can do this. So that delivers up to 44 million pixels of resolution. Like other iMacs, we have down-facing stereo speakers, but they've been really beefed up for the iMac Pro. In fact, a significant part of the internal structure is taken up by the resonance chambers. Even though the speakers on the standard 5K iMac already sound fantastic, these are much louder. In fact, they're about 10 decibels louder in my testing. We also get a deeper bass response and a broader frequency response. So you get a lot more detail in audio, which is great if you use your iMac Pro for audio editing. So the baseline iMac Pro starts at $49.99, but the version I went with has a 10-core Xeon CPU, which delivers the best overall turbo boost speed of 4.5 gigahertz. But of course, if you want, you can go all the way up to 18-core. I also chose the Vega 64 GPU with 16 gigs of on-package HBM2 memory, which boosts memory bandwidth up to 400 gigs per second. I also doubled the SSD stores to 2 terabytes and doubled the EC RAM to 64 gigs. Although it's not really easy to do, once you get inside the iMac Pro, it's pretty easy to upgrade the components. In fact, the RAM is mounted in standard DIMM slots. We also have a rated SSD, so all of these are components you can swap out. It also looks like it might be possible to swap out the CPU, but we'll have to wait for more testing. So running some benchmarks to get an idea of the relative performance compared to the maxed out Core i7 iMac I reviewed earlier this year. So according to Geekbench, I'm getting a single core score of around 5,500 and a staggering multi-core score of 36,500. So you can see the 5K iMac with the Core i7 clocked at 4.2 gigahertz still beats the single core score of the Xeon clocked at three gigahertz. OpenCL performance makes a big jump here with the iMac Pro from 122,000 to nearly 170,000 on the score. The gap increases with the metal benchmark jumping from 115,000 to 174,000. So the iMac Pro's GPUs are ideal for 3D rendering and VR game development, but it's not really a gaming machine. So if you look at the Cinebench scores, the OpenGL score are up modestly with the iMac Pro over the top of the line 5K iMac with the Radeon Pro 580 GPU but the CPU benchmarks are off the charts. They're more than double the performance of the iMac 5K. iMac Pro also offers up to 120 gigs of fast DDR4 ECC RAM and four terabytes of SSD storage. And with the rated configuration, we get up to 3.3 gigs on the write speed and 2.8 on the read speed. So when it comes to real world applications, what I'm most interested in finding out is how fast Final Cut Pro can transcode video on the iMac Pro. So I duplicated the same seven minute plus 4K project on each machine and exported it using the same compressor profile. And as I expected, the 5K iMac outperformed the iMac Pro, completing the same task in about eight and a half minutes, while the iMac Pro took a little over 10 minutes. This is thanks mostly to Intel's QuickSync video encoding hardware, which is not available on the Radeon CPUs in the iMac Pro. However, the iMac Pro destroys the 5K iMac and other CPU intensive tasks, such as video stabilization, which takes a fraction of the time on the iMac Pro. iMac Pro is really engineered for professional users that can benefit from the multi-threaded processing power of Xeon CPUs or need the overhead to run multiple demanding applications at once and render projects quickly. And if you're editing 8K video, this is clearly the best Mac for the job. When it comes down to it, if you don't know you need the iMac Pro, you probably don't need the iMac Pro. This is a very specialized computer for a certain professional who needs the workstation power of Xeon CPUs and Vega GPUs. The iMac Pro is overkill certainly for my needs with 4K video editing, but it's nice to have the graphics headroom for three 5K monitors, along with the additional I.O. and improved speakers, cameras, microphones, and the overall improvements to RAM and storage speeds. And I have to admit, it's really just nice to have a space gray iMac to match everything else. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the iMac Pro. If you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know with a like, and I'll see you again in my next video.